We're all like one, marching forward till the new goal, a dream. We lift up our hands. Stretching like one big family together. We're running towards our dream. Let's give glory to God. We're running. Like one family, we approach one another, place our hands on each other's shoulders. We build a wall. We grab hands. We give ourselves a massage. Jump for him. And up. You're doing great. Give your neighbor a massage. And your other neighbor. Give ourselves a massage. And give glory to God. You're wonderful. Good job. You're all doing a wonderful job. Give God the glory for yourselves. The atmosphere, the atmosphere of revival, of God's joy, turn to your neighbor and say, you're doing such a wonderful job. You're a true worshiper of God. God will use you mightily. You'll see. Say this, you'll see. And this is truth. Again, let's give glory to God. Hallelujah. And right now, dear friends, to your round of applause for all of us together to worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, I invite to the stage the worship team from the country Kyrgyzstan.
Hallelujah, people of God. Are you ready to worship our great King? Hallelujah, give Him great, great glory. Our God, He is truly great. Hallelujah.
Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Today is a very important day. It's a day of safety for the church. God spoke to me and He said all situations, all critics, all the circumstances that are built around us, that God is standing behind them. Why? I'll explain to you. God showed it to me in seclusion that all start working in different countries. And in every country, we will have a movement just as big as we have here. Yes. And in many countries, it will be even bigger than it is here. But here, it will be 10 times bigger, 20 times bigger. Yes, let's give glory to God for this. And God showed me that I must be prepared, ready, that in my church someone could rise up, a rebellious person, someone sent in by the devil, one who will flatter you, he will rise up, rise up, you will give him authority, you will give him a microphone, and he'll do something bad. He will split the church, or he'll begin to poison people, he will testify against you, and with every step, just like Robert Dion said, the test will be even bigger, and the church must be taught. The church must be ready, and it must know how to stand against all the attacks of the devil. Am I right or no? Therefore, we know that God controls all things. Therefore, even if people are saying things against us, it means that we need this. Everything works for our good. Because God, He shows His glory here. Here on the stage, He comes. His anointing comes into the sanctuary. His power comes into the sanctuary. And through this, He says, I am with you. All is well. My power is with you. My anointing is with you. My presence is with you. And everything that is happening, you need this. Because I'm doing something within the church itself. At one time, I was doing this in you. Then I was doing this in your team. Now, I'm doing this in the entire church so the church can be like a well-trained army. Hallelujah. Let's give glory to God. And before anything, I want to start with practical advice. Never get into dialogue with people who are saying negative things about the church or about your apostle or about a minister. Never get into dialogue. Never read these articles. Never watch these video programs, these clips and so forth. The mistake that Eve allowed. How did the fall of man happen? Third chapter of Genesis. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, listen very carefully, has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And what Eve should have done, she should have said, Devil, leave in the name of Jesus. Turn around and walk away quickly, right? But Eve, she entered a dialogue with him and she said, She said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. That is, 
the devil, the snake, he openly attacked God. He told Eve that God is bad, that God is stealing something from Eve, that God took something from Adam and Eve and he's scared that they'll receive it. Do you hear me? He told her that God was being dishonest with them and Eve, she accepted it. Why? Because she, in the very beginning, answered correctly, but in the end, she got hooked and the venom of the snake, as Victoria was talking about this venom, it entered her. And further it said, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. This is how the fall of man happened. Listen very carefully. The fall of man happened because of dialogue. The fall of man happens because of dialogue. Dialogue should never exist with a person who today is filled with demons, with criticism, with gossip. Never. All the dialogue should be in this. Goodbye. This is it. I don't want to hear anything else. This is how the conversation should go. Very short. When I saw something in the internet, something on TV, I will change the channel. And I would rather turn on a sermon about the Holy Spirit. Amen? This is how it should be done. Let's give glory to God. Who would be able to think? Who would have thought that Eve, because of dialogue, she got hooked on this. If she did not talk to the devil, nothing like this would have ever happened. And I'll share a very interesting story with you from the Bible. I'll read it to you. This story it shows shows us very interesting sides of how the devil works. Take a look at what happened. 1 Kings chapter 21 And it came to pass after these things that Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard which was in Jezreel, next to the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. So Ahab spoke to Naboth, saying, Give me your vineyard, that I may have it for a vegetable garden, because it's near, next to my house, and for it I will give you a vineyard better than this one, or if it seems good to you, I will give you its worth in money. But Naboth said to Ahab, The Lord forbid that I should give the inheritance of my fathers to you. So Ahab went into his house, sullen and displeased, because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. For he said, I will not give you the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid down on his bed and turned away his face and would eat no food. Take a look. The vineyard symbolizes the church of Jesus Christ. Just so you would always know. Because Jesus said, I am the vine and you are who? The branches. That is, the vineyard is the church of Jesus Christ. And there are wicked men. Ahab, he was a wicked king who wanted to overtake the vineyard. And if it does not work out for them, they get so upset inside that they eat no bread and drink no water. Take a look. Look at their condition. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him. Does everyone know who Jezebel is? It's a scary person. Who knows? Lift up your hands, just so I know. Practically everyone knows who Jezebel is. And she said to him, Why is your spirit so sullen that you eat no food? He said to her, Because I spoke to Naboth the Jezreelite and said to him, Give me your vineyard for money, or else, if it pleases you, I will give you another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give you my vineyard. Then Jezebel his wife said to him, You now exercise authority over Israel. Arise, eat food, and let your heart be cheerful. I will give you the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. And she wrote letters in Ahab's name. Pay attention. She sealed them with his seal and sent the letters to the elders 
and the nobles who were dwelling in the city with Naboth. She wrote in a letter saying, Proclaim a fast and seat Naboth with high honor among the people. Take a look, a strategy. And seat two men, scoundrels, before him to bear witness against him, saying, You have blasphemed God and the king. Then take him out and stone him, that he may die. This is the strategy that Jezebel created in order to take over the church, figuratively speaking, to overtake the vineyard. And this strategy, dear friends, this is the strategy of the devil, and to this day, he has not changed anything. And I want to explain to you one story. Since 2007, approximately that year, one of the TV channels, you know which one, one plus one, this TV channel, it always shows broadcasts about us and it always shows them who knows when right after the college right after the college these broadcasts are released and with every broadcast they go further and further beyond the limits of what is permissible they're setting up false witnesses who are saying such scary things they choose people. People, for example, they were saying, I was his helper. Well, how is this possible? How can they say this? And this person says, people came to me, scary people from Muntian, and they cut my hands. Take a look, my hands are cut. I'm listening to this and not sure what to say. And then there's some girl. She says, Muntian, he was trying to touch me. Can you simply imagine? They're going beyond the limits of what is permissible and they have no conscience. They have no limit of decency. It's a 100% cursed channel. This is 100%. Just idiotic. And I understand other TV channels, it happened that they showed something. But this one's just twisted completely. And I'm not scared to say this because I wrote letters to them, good letters. I said, please be wise, stop doing this. If you have some kind of questions, what's the problem? I met with the editors of these broadcasts. I met at Gulliver, we sat for three hours and he says to me, listen, for this work we got paid. So no matter what, I'll say bad things about you. But he says, if you give me a personal interview, then from the 10 questions, 3, they won't be so aggressive. And I said, listen, you decided to bargain with me? You can ask all 10 aggressive questions, no problem. Because if people truly can see, they can tell who I am. They can see the God who's manifested through me. They trust me not your TV channel, who's a deceit and a liar, just complete trash, a complete trash bin, not a TV channel. And I'll tell you this thing, listen carefully. What are they doing? What they do is take different people and post them and post them and post them. And this year, they grabbed certain people that left from our congregation those people who hate us. And there's a person who hates us. He's collected all the people who are unhappy, who for many years, they were in our church, and for whatever reason, they left. And the reason is always the same. It's sin. When a person begins to sin, they begin to hate the church. They begin to hate the pastor. Even though the pastor had no relationship to this person, they never even fellowship personally. But still, who is always wrong at the very end? It's always going to be the pastor. He gets all the blame. So here's what I'm trying to say. They found all these people. And imagine this picture. Imagine what they will be doing. I even have a recording, a video recording. It just happened this way. The security team, they created this video where this person 
he pulls out all the cards on the table of what they want to do. And he says, we will go to one plus one. He says, we will go everywhere, in the internet, everywhere. He said, I already have a group of people who are ready to say against Mintan anything that I tell them to. Anything possible. That they saw how he snorted cocaine before he goes up on stage and that he's a thief and they'll say that they saw all of this others will say that they slept with him listen I'm not sleeping with anyone except my wife anyways what's the point of sleeping with me anyway I'm sorry lots of honor let them go play anyways they're ready to say all these things they're ready to say lots of different different things and he lists all of these things therefore all of his ideas we know them we're well aware therefore time will pass by college will pass by and these people of course they'll release these broadcasts these journalists they're professionals to set up a scenario in such a way that would be so believable that a person, for example, who is not familiar with us, who does not know me, who is completely unaware whether it's true or not, for him to believe it 100%. You understand, right? They're professionals in this. They'll make it so believable. They'll make it in such a way that they'll put something in a person's eye so tears would flow. And he'll be sitting there and sharing, sharing how they suffered so much, how they're so disappointed when they saw this or the other thing. And all this, my friends, this is all a setup. This is what Jezebel did. And on these people, they have the spirit of Jezebel upon them. This is a literal demon. The spirit of Antichrist, the spirit of Jezebel. And you want to see what happened further? You're curious, right? And here it says, Stone him so that he may die. So the men of his city, the elders and nobles who were inhabitants of his city, did as Jezebel had sent to them, as it was written in the letters which he had sent to them. They proclaimed a fast and seated Naboth with high honor among the people. And two men, scoundrels, came in and sat before him. And the scoundrels witnessed against him, against Naboth in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth has blasphemed God and the king. Then they took him outside the city and stoned him with stones, so that he died. Then they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth has been stoned and is dead. And it came to pass, when Jezebel heard that Naboth had been stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, which he refused to give you for money, for Naboth is not alive, but dead. So it was, when Ahab heard, listen what happened, when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, Ahab got up and went down to take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. Here's what happened. Can you imagine? This is how the devil, he's working today. The devil, figuratively speaking, he wants to take the church to himself. He wants to make them people who are defiled, people who stepped away, worthless people. He wants to make a righteous person from a holy person. He wants to make them a wicked person. This is what the devil does through witnesses, as it's written here, through scoundrels who speak. And you know, why is it so important to pray for me? It's very important to pray for me. Because truly, dear friends, everything is not as simple as it seems. You understand that Naboth, he was an example. Do you agree with this or not? Naboth was a righteous man. How should the people have acted, those who stoned him with stones? What do you think? They should have believed Naboth, because when he was being accused, Naboth said, I did not do this. I did not blaspheme God nor the king. Correct? But they believed these people. 
But why? Here's an interesting question that I want to ask you. Why did they believe the scoundrels? Why did they believe these men? Why? They believed these false witnesses because they were authoritative people. You can write that down. Because the voices of authoritative people were used. And the devil, he wants to lift up authoritative people so they'd be false witnesses, so that they would rise against the church, against the apostle, against the ministers, against the team. We must pray. You must pray for me, pray for the team, pray for the church. Pray every single day. You know, in my life, I had a story. I remember when I was in Perishepine, when I just began my ministry. This was half a year after Yanashe Sergei was killed. My friend, he got killed. Simply in an open space. They were praying. They had a night prayer in the forest. And a guy came who began to shoot. He was drunk. He was just shooting over the heads of people. And Sergei Yanashin, he ran forward as a pastor. At that time, they did not have a security team. He did not have intercessors. Only on Monday, he wanted to create a group of intercessors. And this was Friday. A Friday to Saturday night. And he ran forward. And he grabbed the gun of this person so that he would stop shooting. But this guy, he pressed on the trigger. And with the shot, it shattered. And it completely made a hole in his stomach. Everything was torn apart. His guts, they fell out. And he was holding them with his hands. He fell on his knees. I was not there, but they told me the story. Those who were nearby. He fell to his knees and he said, I got shot. He was conscious. They quickly put him in a car. They were driving him. And he's understanding what's happening. Blood's flowing out. Strength is leaving his body. And only when they put him on a gurney, the sister who was near, she's even here, Ira Hudukova. She's here studying at the college. She was near him. And he was saying, Ira, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I want to live. And right before her, he died. They tried to keep him going on adrenaline. But the doctor said right away, sorry, in what way can we possibly fix him? It's impossible. Because completely, this entire area, it was scorched. Can you imagine? Completely all of it, it was scorched. There was nothing left. Therefore, at 6 p.m., they kept giving him adrenaline shots from 2 o'clock in the morning till 6 p.m. And then his heart stopped and he died. And half a year went by, friends. And I approached the entrance of my mom's house, my Victoria's mom, my mother-in-law. And I'm opening the door with a big key, a very big key. And all of a sudden, there's this huge hit. I get kicked in the shoulder that with my other shoulder, I break this key. I quickly get up and there's these two big guys. And my hat fell off. And these guys, they take a bottle, a thick bottle, and they hit me one time in the face. They try to hit my temple, but they hit this bone. To this day, it's not fully straight. It was such a powerful hit. It was unbearable. And the second time, they hit me on the head, and they break this bottle on my head. And one guy grabs me. He grabs me and grabs my head and he's holding me. And the second one with a broken bottle is trying to cut my neck. And he's swinging and I'm looking. He got so close. And as if it was a miracle, angels were helping me. And I pull myself away and he misses me. Second time, misses me. Third time, imagine, misses me. And by some miracle, I rip myself out and I start running away from them. And I'm running away. And I know the power of intercession, friends. I'm running away. And immediately I ran to a cafe. My head is all bloody. It's all flown from me. Police came. An ambulance came. They took me. My head was really injured. It was just crazy pain in my head. Why am I saying this? Because in clear sight, the devil can attack anointed people. 
in clear space, he can attack them. He can do such things that a person can literally die. In clear sight, this can happen. And at the time, I understood. That night, I understood. He took Yanisha and he decided to take me out because we were walking together and we had a very similar mindset and we were doing everything together all the time. They even called us Muntyanish because he's Yanish and I'm Muntyan and they combined our names Muntyanish because we always preached together, we were always together, we went through everything together and I understood that the devil decided to kill me and this really influenced me and I'll tell you, I'm always treasuring prayer. If someone writes to me, I'm praying for you. For me, this is always so important because prayer, it's very, very important. You can't even imagine how prayer is so important. I can't even describe to you with words. Do you understand? Because, for example, I don't believe in anything except prayer. I only believe in prayer. I know that when you pray, God hears you. And God will come to your rescue. And God will protect you. If you're not praying, then you can be equipped with weapons. You can have a gun in every pocket. Knives. You could be wearing a bulletproof vest, wearing a helmet through the street, just like in the movies. And all this won't help you. Because if the devil directs someone against you, he'll direct them for them to kill you anyway. And today, the devil, he's trying to kill people spiritually in the church. Kill them spiritually. What does that mean? He specifically takes his people who, with their thick bottles, figuratively speaking, with these broken bottles, they come up to you. And these bottles, it's like their tongue. And they're swinging their tongue. They're speaking with their tongue to cut your throat, to kill you, to simply cut you, and that your blood would flow out, and that you would die immediately in two minutes. This is exactly what they're doing. And we must never allow for this to happen to us. I want to say to all the TV viewers, dear friends, if you got hooked on this criticism, you must understand something that I see myself, the greater the anointing grows, the more I see of this criticism. And I'm simply warning you, with the growth of anointing and the growth of our ministry, there's going to be even more criticism against us. And God, He warned me about this. There will be such things said that you can't even fit into your mind. These people, they're not okay. They're possessed by demons. But you do not believe what they write on the internet. Don't believe what they show in these broadcasts. Take a look with your own two eyes. Look at the ministry. Today, take a look at how the Holy Spirit moves. Do you think these critics, those people who have no fruit, they can't take a person and say, this person received healing from cancer through my prayer. They won't be able to say this. Or this other person, he was in a wheelchair with cerebral palsy and I paid for his surgery, I organized it and now he walks. They can't say this. Or for example, they did something else. They won't be able to say that. They have absolutely no fruit. And how do these people have any right to say anything? They are saying something in their broadcasts. They're writing something. Do not believe them. Take a look at our ministry. How many good things that we do. How much good things that we do for people. How we try so hard. We're not relaxed. We're trying with all our strength. With all our strength. We're trying to make this world better. We preach Christ. We preach the gospel and we're climbing out of our skin to achieve this result and God, He's helping us, He's supporting us He confirms our ministry through miracles and wonders therefore, if you got caught on this hook I suggest to you, renounce it and say, I never want to watch all this dirt and dig around in it 
and try to figure out, is it true or not true? Is it a lie or not? I would rather listen to sermons that Apostle Vladimir Muntian shares. I'd rather listen to sermons and get edified. And this will much more powerfully affect your life than any of these clips and all of these bad things. You must know. You must take a look at the team. My team, many people from them are with me for 20 years now. Some 18, some 14 years. Some 10 years, some 9 years, some of the youngest ones. But listen, all these people, they're near my side. They're all on fire. They're passionate for God. They're dedicated. Many of them live at the temple before the college, right? They sleep, live there. There's many people, hundreds of people that lived there, slept there. They came there with their families. This is just incredible. And the team, it's a huge indicator. Because my team, they don't only see me as an apostle. They see me as a regular person. They see me as a friend, as a regular guy. And they see what kind of person that I am. They know what kind of church we have. Because they're builders of this church. And this is a team of holy people, anointed people, dedicated people. And you know, the church, it's like a child. A child. For example, your child. And tell me, if someone would take your child, would approach them and hit them, would you defend them or not? Of course you would. Who would defend their child? Please raise your hand. All of you would, right? Because it's your child. And today, we have to treat the church like our child, our beloved child. We can't let someone to hit our child. We can't allow someone to hit the church. We can't allow someone to yell at the church, to say bad things about the church. No, we will not allow this. We will defend our church as we defend our child. Amen. And you know, in conclusion, I want to tell you, right now we'll have a special prayer. I don't want to take too much time. You already heard very much today. But listen, be dedicated to God. Be faithful to God. Be committed to that word that you hear. Get under that word and know that when you're under this word and you act in agreement to this word, you will never get caught into the nets of the devil. Never. You will never get caught. And right now, I want all the speakers who taught for all of them to come up here and we'll pray for you. Let's rise to our feet and also for the TV viewers who are watching us. I want to say to all the TV viewers, dear friends, dear friends, listen, do not believe all these lies. Do not believe all this gossip. You're not some kind of grandmas who sit on benches and just talk. You're serious heroes of faith. And even if you're a grandma, you're a grandma who's a general. Amen. We're not some kind of trash bins, right? So stop believing all these things, all these lies, all these foolish things. Listen, I'm a normal guy. And all our church, they're good people. We all love God with all our heart. We prove this through our actions through our deeds. We offer, we love God, we preach the gospel. We see how many people are born from above at our crusades, on Sundays. We see what God is doing and we're regular people. But God, He anointed us with the Holy Spirit and because of this, we have all this criticism. If I was not anointed by the Holy Spirit, then you would not have known my name and you would have never heard anything about me or read about me. But the Holy Spirit, He anointed me. And this anointing, it causes a reaction in the devil. And the devil uses people in the same way as God uses a person. In the same way, the devil, He uses a person. Therefore, do not believe anyone. Stop watching all this dirt. Don't waste your precious time. Don't allow your ears to be filled with some kind of dirt, some kind of information. 
You don't take dirt from the street and place it in your ears. You don't do this, right? Then why do you listen to these broadcasts? Why do you read this on the internet? Rather, open our app. Open the TV channel. Look at what God is doing here. It's better to look at what God is doing. And God will show His glory in your life. Directly through the TV, God will heal you. He will change your life. And He will show His glory. Just simply believe this, that we all love God with all our heart and all our life. It belongs only to Him. And I want right now for all of us to pray. Heavenly Father, we ask You in the name of Jesus, may Your wisdom remain upon each person, Lord. May Your anointing may it remain that we may discern Your work, to seek Your work, to follow after You, Lord, bless each one of us to love our church, to love everything that you do through it, to love our apostle, to love our pastor. Lord, bless us in the name of Jesus. We proclaim that not one weapon that was created against us, against the church, against our apostle, it will not be successful ever in the name of Jesus. We proclaim your glory, God, your greatness, your victory in all the days of the life of our church, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, we ask you today for all of our movement, for our big family, great God. My God, strengthen us, Lord. Strengthen us from within. Strengthen us even more powerfully. Lord, in the name of Jesus, make us powerful and strong. Make us powerful and strong. Place us on a firm foundation, my God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. And expand our borders. Expand our borders. Expand our borders. Oh, my God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord. And may each one in your house be faithful to you. Be faithful in your house, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that this teaching that we heard today, Lord, that it would make us strong, wise, Father, may the spiritual discernment come. May these spirits that desire to destroy the church, may they be discovered and destroyed. May your anointing and your power Destroy the devil. Devil, you are destroyed. You are deprived of your authority and power. All spirits of gossip, we destroy you in the name of Jesus. Lord, may your church be powerful like a monolith, united. May nothing, may nothing stop it in the name of Jesus. We ask you, God, that you would bless our church, that you would bless us, Lord, that we would be together to the end of days, that we would carry your word, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And as Jesus prayed, when he said, I'm not only praying for you, but for those who will believe through your word, that every person today, they would be a person of influence, they would speak about God, they would speak about his works, he would speak about the church and that today the name of God the name of the church of God our pastor it would be glorified and every person like yes and amen would know that we are from God in the name of Jesus and great God we're continuing to pray in the name of Jesus Christ so that forever we would become one team in the name of Jesus together with our spiritual father with our apostle so that we would be baptized into one spirit, one body, and fulfill for all the days of our life one vision that is from you in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, pick up a great team of anointed people. God, allow us to be in the full armor of God every single day to overcome any enemy in the name of Jesus and to glorify your name here on earth in the name of Jesus. Lord, we believe in your word, which says that we're one church, one body, 
your body here on earth. And today, Lord, we forbid the enemy to influence, to act. We forbid in the name of Jesus Christ to gossip, to destroy, to steal. We bind the deeds of the devil. We forbid to hurt your body. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we ask you, may this day, may it enter history. May today's teaching, today's teaching make us a church united, strong, unbreakable, and expand us in the name of Jesus. God, I ask you that every student of this college, they would remain your disciple, your student, to the end of their days. Father, I ask you that everyone standing in this hall and all the TV viewers, they would be true children of their spiritual father, that every single person, they would be on fire with your vision, Father, that your anointing, your power, your strength, they would be upon each student, Father, I ask you that in this hall right now your warriors would be born. Father, I ask you that your church they would change their position to attack. Lord, and destroy all their enemies, all lies, and all criticism. In the name of Jesus. Right now, let's all link hands. Father, Today we come before you and we're all praying to you so that everything that you're doing right now it would make its home in our hearts so that we would be protected by your word. We ask you, Lord, and I ask you for each person who's here in this hall. I ask for each person that's watching us on TV Lord, preserve them. May all poison, may any kind of dirt, may all this leave, leave in the name of Jesus Christ. Today, may the devil be destroyed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Devil, I bind you. I bind you. I bind you. I command you. Get out. Unclean spirit. Spirit of gossip. Gosper. Get out, unclean spirit, devil, we bind you. Leave, in the name of Jesus, leave. We command you, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, get out. We forbid you, leave devil, in the name of Jesus Christ. Leave devil, in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Holy Spirit, we ask you, Remain upon our lives. Lord, bless each one. Today, may each person be a person who's filled with your glory. May not one person be poisoned. May not one person be unhappy. But may they be filled with your glory, joy, peace, love. May healing come. May miracles come. May your greatness come in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, our precious Lord, I ask you, and today we all agree here, and we ask you, make each one of us this true protector. Make each one of us this warrior, this defender, who will defend the work of God, who will defend the church of God, as a mother protects her child, as a father protects his child, Lord, make us such defenders as a groom who loves and protects his bride. Lord, make us such defenders. Place your hand upon yourself and say this to God. Say, Lord, make me your defender who will always stand on guard protecting your church, protecting your work, protecting your vision. Lord, I'm your person. You can depend on me. 
And right now, lift up your hand. Lord, I ask you, bless each one. Bless each one. May it never happen that some kind of poison will destroy them. Never, no poison will harm them. Lord, place this protection upon each person. May your protection be upon them. May your angels protect them. That never, no poison can harm them in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask you. I know there are people right now who are watching us and who right now, at this moment, they were poisoned by some kind of deceit, some kind of gossip. But right now, they're saying words of repentance. God, I pray for these people. Wash them with your blood. Forgive them. Forgive them, Lord. Wash them with your blood right in this moment. And may this poison may be neutralized. And may your forgiveness come and your restoration into their life in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Friends, before we're going to continue to pray, I want to share one story. I have a feeling that there are people here and also at the TV screens. And right now, we're going to have to pray for them. At one point, this was approximately in 2010, there was a woman who received a powerful healing from cancer. And this was actually at Mount of Moses Bible College. She received a powerful healing from cancer. She glorified God so much. She's a very good woman, a very good person, truly. But years went by, and when we were already in Kiev, she came to me. She came to me specifically and she said, listen to me very carefully right now. She came to me and said, and said, I must talk to you. I said, okay. This was on Vidubichi at our temple. I called her into my office and she says, I had this situation happen. I went to a church in some city and there at that church, they said very negative things about you. And at first, I did not listen to any of it. But I felt how the Holy Spirit told me, don't go to this church any longer. Don't go there any longer. You have to go to regeneration. And she said, I did not listen to the Holy Spirit because that church was much closer. And regeneration, it was far away. I had to drive. And I started to go there. And they spoke so often about you, said so many things about you. It was as if everything revolved around the church regeneration. That after some time, I began to believe that you're a bad person. And when there was this day when I literally believed that you're a bad person, practically a few days later, doctors discovered cancer in me. And she said, what must I do? Please pray for me again that I may be healed. And you know what? I stood there and I understood that the situation it's much more complicated than to just simply pray for her. Well, you know, I don't like fake things. False prayers, some kind of false actions, I'll pray. What's the point? This is a serious problem. You have to sit down with a person. You have to consult them. You have to lead them through processes of renouncing things. And this person deeply must realize what they've done wrong. And I told her, I'll do everything that I can. But I told her, you must understand, healing will come to you when you, on the inside, on the depth of your heart, not because of the sickness, but because you truly repent before God, because you disobeyed the Holy Spirit, and because you accepted criticism against me. And you know what? She left. And unfortunately, I never saw her again. And I don't know how her destiny turned out. But inside of me, I have this testimony that nothing good came out from it. And possibly, someone is here. Someone is watching us live. You're in a very similar situation. You accepted criticism. Or possibly, you even received healing specifically through my ministry. 
And then you accepted gossip. Possibly you were feeding off of sermons, and then you accepted gossip. And today, you have some kind of problems in your life. Or maybe these problems have not yet started, and we must do something to prevent them. And I want to pray for you, and also for those people who are here in the sanctuary, that you, right now, could sincerely repent before God, and so that you could get restored inside and say, I will never accept any kind of reproach against an anointed one. Psalm 15 says, Who may dwell in your holy hill in the presence of God? A person who does not accept reproach against their neighbor. This is what Psalm 15 says. And you must know, this is what's written in the Bible. David said, If anyone lifts up their hand against an anointed one of God, cannot remain unpunished. Even when we just listen to someone, when we accept this, we lift up our hand against the anointed one of God, and most surely punishment will come. Therefore, right now, I want to pray for you so that you would be restored inside and so that you would say to yourself, that's it from this day, I'm a clean person and no trash, no dirt, no gossip will ever enter my heart again. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I pray to you right in this moment. I pray to you for every TV viewer. I pray to you for every person who's here in the sanctuary who ended up in this kind of situation. In the name of Jesus Christ, right now, Lord, I ask you, I ask you about your forgiveness. I call upon your blood. I call upon your blood. I call upon your blood, great King. I call upon your blood. I call upon your blood, great God. With your holy blood, wash, O oh Lord, wash today. Today we renounce all gossip. Today we renounce all these dead things. We renounce this criticism in the name of Jesus. We don't accept this trash any longer. I'm praying from your name right now in the name of Jesus Christ. We never accept this again, ever again, never again. Say it, I'm clean. In the name of Jesus, I'm clean in the name of Jesus. I'm clean in the name of Jesus. Therefore, healing belongs to me. Blessing belongs to me. Anointing belongs to me. Favorable outcome belongs to me. Say amen to this. Say it loudly. Hallelujah. Give glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 And I know people who are watching us right now, you just received, in this short prayer, you received full restoration inside. And right now, the Holy Spirit, I ask you that you would touch, 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 touch them, touch them, touch, touch your anointing, your anointing, your anointing. On the left side from me, a woman who has cancer in the female organs on the bottom of her stomach, right now you had a healing. Just right now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Also in the center, at the very end, someone has an issue with their knee right now. There's a full healing in the knee. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you. Your anointing, Lord. Your anointing, Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Remain in your places right now. The anointing of God. The anointing of God. Right now, the Holy Spirit moved in the healing of the heart. And God has shown me as if the valve through which blood flows through, this tube, and there's something wrong with it, whether there's a clot there, or it's been damaged. Right now there's a healing there, full healing. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. This artery right now. In the name of Jesus. There's a full healing there. It's coming to the heart. And these people who have issues with their hearts, place your hand on your heart because right now the anointing has come for the healing of the heart. The gift of the Holy Spirit is working in the sanctuary. The anointing for healing of the heart. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The anointing for healing of the heart. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit. Touch. 
touch. Touch. Right now, God is healing. He's healing the heart. Touch. In the name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. And right now, God is speaking to me again. There's a healing in the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland is being healed here at this college. God is doing something specifically with the thyroid gland. God is constantly giving me this word of knowledge and I cannot remain silent. That's absolutely forbidden. I have to say the things that God has shown me. The thyroid gland, it's been fully healed. A new thyroid gland. I can see in the spirit a new thyroid. A new thyroid. Completely restored. This entire hormonal process is restored in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Everyone who has issues with the thyroid gland, you can place your hand on the thyroid right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, touch Holy Spirit. Touch Holy Spirit. Touch Holy Spirit. Touch Holy Spirit. Spirit. You're anointing. And right now there's healing in the prostate in the prostate gland. Right now, the prostate is being healed. And also, the TV viewers, please listen to me. The anointing is moving there where you're located, through your gadgets, through your computers, through your laptops. Right now, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is moving through the TV screen. Right now, there's full healing. Full healing. New prostate. New prostate. A new prostate. And God has shown me a person whose prostate was enlarged. There's some kind of hardening there. Right now, there's a full, full healing happening. It's coming to norm, to an absolute norm in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Wherever there's cancer, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Full healing. And this cancer has to do with the prostate. Right now, there's a full healing. Also with the intestines, cancer. Someone's receiving full healing in the name of Jesus. Also the cervix, there's cancer. And right now, there's full healing in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Someone has a problem. Cancer. Cancer of the pancreas. Right now, full healing. Full healing. Accept it in the name of Jesus. Promise to God to testify. All you have to say is that, God, I'll glorify your name. I'll praise your name. Just promise to him that you will testify. This is all he's waiting for. This is all you must do. Full healing of the pancreas in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Also, cancer in the lungs right now. Especially one lung. Right now, there's full healing in a person. Full healing. In the name of Jesus, O Holy Spirit, touch, 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 touch. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Spirit of asthma, I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. And I command you, get out. And a person who has asthma right now just received full deliverance and healing. Get out in the name of Jesus. And also there are people who have issues with their ears right now. I ask you that you would touch your ears, those people who have this issue. And right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command these ears to be fully healed, the auditory nerve to be fully healed in the name of Jesus. Right now, this entire membrane, there's a full healing there in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. The anointing of healing is in the sanctuary, friends. The anointing of healing, the gift of healing is here, moving. Also, those people who have issues with their eyes and your retina and everything else, everything that cannot be treated, 
Right now, touch your eyes. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, touch. 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 Oh, such an anointing is filling this place. Oh my God, hallelujah. And right now, God has shown me that from the waist all the way to the bottom, to the tips of the toes, right now, there's a full healing. It just happened. Full healing just happened for someone. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Right now, you need to stand up. You must stand up in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh my God, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh Holy Spirit, touch. 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 Today, from your anointing, may every yoke be broken. Today, dear Lord, may verdicts of the devil be annulled the sentences of Satan, may they be reversed. Today, may your word stand, dear Lord, upon every person, and that word is healed, 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 health, strength, health, strength. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, your anointing, your anointing of healing, it's here in the sanctuary. The anointing of healing is here in the sanctuary. The anointing of healing is in the sanctuary. The anointing of healing is here in the sanctuary today. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The anointing of healing is here in the sanctuary. The anointing of healing is here in the sanctuary. Oh, my God. Touch. Touch, 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 touch. Oh, Holy Spirit, from your anointing, may every yoke be broken today. Every yoke. The movement of healing just began on someone's skin, just right now. Full healing of your skin. Oh, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. There's a man here and you have issues with your reproductive organs. Right now, in this moment, God is healing you. I'm not going to name every single thing, but there's full healing, full healing of reproductive organs, full healing. In the name of Jesus. 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 Oh, Holy Spirit. And today, God is healing a person who has hemorrhoids, who has been suffering for a long time. Right now, there's full healing. Full healing. Everything is new there now. Full healing. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Also, there's healing in the sanctuary from high blood pressure right now. In this moment, you're receiving full healing. You can sense how there's warmth. It's on your head, on the back of your head right now. Full healing. It's coming to you, to your body. There's no more high blood pressure. It's gone and it will not return. It will always be norm in the name of Jesus. 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 God's given me another word of knowledge that someone has issues with their spleen. And right now God is healing the spleen. Full healing of someone's spleen. In the name of Jesus. Oh Holy Spirit. 
Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Hallelujah. I'm asking you to place your hand on the sick area and I'm praying for you. Dear Holy Spirit, may your precious anointing right in this moment touch someone. Also those who are watching us on TV, place your hand on the sick area. May your anointing touch them. Touch. Touch. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Touch them. I'm asking you, Holy Spirit, to touch them and heal. To heal completely. To heal. To heal them. Heal them. Heal them. Heal them. Heal. Touch. Touch. Heal them. Hallelujah. 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 I have this feeling that Victoria must pray for the area of the soul. Precious Holy Spirit, I ask you right now, touch, touch every person who's in need in the healing of their soul. I ask you to move. I ask you to touch with your power. Touch them right now. And there's a young girl, you're pregnant. You're on a late term, but you're in extreme fear. You're expecting problems. Right now, this fear is being destroyed in your life. And you must know that everything will be best case scenario for you in the name of Jesus. Oh, precious Holy Spirit, I ask you, I ask you, a girl who has great insecurities right now, you sense the touch of the Holy Spirit and these insecurities are destroyed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Young man, you are constantly expecting problems that nothing will work out for you. You live in this. You have the spirit of rejection and right now, the spirit of rejection is destroyed in your life. Holy Spirit, I ask you, I ask you to touch each person who right now finds themselves in some kind of torment, who right now in their soul, they have some kind of pain. Wherever there's a spirit of offense, right now, I bind any spirit of offense and I command you to leave. Wherever a family's fallen apart because of offense, right now, I command these demons to get out. I ask you, Holy Spirit, to come into these families. Bring your victory in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There's a person, a man. In your soul, you have some kind of confusion. You're standing on a crossroads and you're not sure what to do. And you don't have a foundation under your feet. But right now, this is destroyed in your life. Right now, there's clarity coming to your mind. Vision is coming to you. You're beginning to see how you must live. It's as if your eyes are opening. Oh Lord, thank you. I thank you. I'm grateful to you, Holy Spirit, precious one. Touch them, touch them. Wherever there's rejection, where people are just defeated by this rejection, I command these demons, these spirits of rejection to leave in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. A person, it's a woman. You're very scared to get sick. You have fear of sickness. Right now, renounce this fear. Renounce this fear. Renounce it right now. That's it. This fear is destroyed in your life. Lord, thank you. I thank you. May your peace be poured out. May your peace be poured out into every soul. May peace come. May joy come. May this confidence come. Confidence in God. May every soul may be filled with celebration. 
may be filled with faith. May every soul be filled with happiness in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Just right now, when we were praying, God showed me a woman who's holding a child. And God spoke to me that right now, a child is being healed. A healing of a child. And right now, I'm praying in the name of Jesus Christ. Wherever there's a sick child, may healing come there. In the name of Jesus. Healing. Healing of a child. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit. Precious Holy Spirit. My friend. My older partner. Move right now. In healing of this child. In the name of Jesus. May the name of Jesus be glorified. May the name of Jesus be lifted high through this, Lord. May the name of Jesus be lifted high through this, Lord. Through healing. Healing of this child. Lord, we ask you, great God. Hallelujah. 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 May your name be glorified through healing of this child, Lord. And we give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, glory, 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 glory to Jesus. Let's give a round of applause to God, a great round of applause. Hallelujah. Today is a special day, a day of safety for the church. But right now, the anointing was exclusive, exclusive for healing. There's different anointings. Anointing for deliverance, for destruction of curses, but sometimes clear anointing for healing. And today was that kind of incident. Many people today will realize after the service, someone will see that they're healed. And you know what I want to tell you, dear friends? Accept your healing without any doubt and glorify God. And most importantly, promise to Him that you will testify. Let's give a great round of applause to God even more powerfully. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dear friends, and you know what I'd like to end today's teachings with? Do you know what? I ask each one of you, every single person, that you would actively participate in defending the church. Right now, add articles to Facebook. Write in the internet. Write everywhere that you can. Add your comments. Add status updates. Add them to the internet. Write on your pages. Testify. Testify about the glory of God, about the church. Testify about everything that you see here. Today, let there be 12,000 testimonies added to the internet. Amen. Hallelujah. May God abundantly abundantly bless you.